We're going to take a look at this vertical resisted motion question together because it has a couple of cool little things that I want you to take notice of which are different from vertical resisted motion questions we've looked at in the past. So let's read it together. An object of mass 100 kilograms is found to experience a resistive force in newtons of one tenth of the square of its velocity. Okay, so let's pause right there. That phrase that you just read, the resistive force in newtons of one tenth the square of its velocity is the first place where I want you to pause. Um, there's two key differences here to what we've had a look at previously. Number one, when we think about resistive force, things like air resistance, aerodynamic drag, uh, we always know that these are in proportion to something related to the velocity because the faster you're going, the more drag you are experiencing. However, we've seen so far examples where uh, it's simply you know one tenth or one fifth or one some other constant proportion of just the velocity on its own. Here, it's not just the velocity, it's the square of its velocity. So when we have a think about the differential equation that's gonna come out of this, it's not just gonna be a V, it's gonna be a V squared that we need to think about. So there's the first factor. And then the second thing is, if you think back to how we introduced uh, vertical resisted motion, and we were talking about the difference between upward and downward journeys, one of the things that I mentioned is that typically we think about force as having mass included, right? And then to get to acceleration, because force equals mass times acceleration, we just divide through by mass. And so a typical situation like this, you can see this is an... Um, this is an object that is falling from rest under gravity. So we're considering a downward journey, or we will be shortly. We would normally think, okay, well, you've got your uh, weight force, mass times gravity, and then you also have this other resistive force that comes from air or water, or whatever medium you're traveling through. And it might've been MKV. In this case, because it's the square of the velocity, you might expect it's an MKV squared. However, I just want you to look back at this sentence again and read it carefully with me. Notice it says, you've got this object of mass 100 kilograms, the resistive force that it experiences in newtons is one tenth the square of its velocity. One tenth the square of its velocity. Do you notice there's no reference there to the mass of the object? We knew that the mass was 100 kilograms, but the resistive force is one tenth the square of its velocity and doesn't seem to care about the mass. So this is important because it means that while these are sort of very frequently encountered uh, equations for vertical resisted motion up and down, they're not the only kind, right? As I've just mentioned, it might not be V squared, it might be V. And in this case, let's choose the right color here. Uh, in this case, mass isn't going to figure into our um, consideration for the velocity squared. It's actually going to be that resistive force will not have an M term in it at all. So those are two differences. And as we go through the rest of the question, it's gonna seem familiar, but if you don't start off with the right equation set up, obviously everything is going to, you know, even no matter how good your working is, you're gonna be heading in the wrong direction mostly. So now that we've set that up, let's see what we can make of uh, the rest of the question. It says, um, as you mentioned before, it's falling from rest under gravity, so it's that downward journey we we're talking about. And I'm going to take gravity with this particular value here, 9.8 meters per second per second. All right, now what do we need to ask? Part A, show that its terminal velocity is about 99 meters per second. Okay. What does that mean? Terminal velocity. Well, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's the velocity that you're ending on, terminal as in terminate or finish. So the idea here is that when the object falls from rest, initially it has a velocity of zero, but it speeds up. Uh, gravity starts to accelerate it downwards, but at some point the acceleration downwards is, uh, or rather the force downwards from gravity is matched by the force upwards from air resistance. You're traveling fast enough that you're experiencing more and more air resistance and that air resistance um, will rise up to a place or will increase to a place where it equals or it balances out with the force of gravity that's going downwards. So when your upward force from resistance equals your downward force from gravity, those two forces, the resultant force or net force will be zero and we will reach our terminal velocity. You'll stop speeding up because gravity is not enough of a force anymore to overcome the air resistance. So therefore, what we wanna show is that that terminal velocity is about 99 meters per second. So how do we get there? 
Well, uh, as we kind of alluded to before, we're going to need to start with an equation that relates our forces to the different values that we have within the question. So I'm going to say, to begin with, that the, uh, would help if I wrote rather than had a laser pointer, the force is going to be equal to um, the sum of all the forces acting on me, which is going to be gravity which we've mentioned already. I've got a particular value for m and a particular value for g that I'm going to substitute in shortly. And then I'm going to be, you know, if I think about downward as this positive value here, um, just as I mentioned before, if you've got a downward journey, think of down as positive. The resistive force is against you, right? So that's why it's a negative. Um, and that proportion there, which I'm going to um, put in there from, from this value up here in a second, is uh, in proportion to the square of its velocity. So this is where my equation begins. And now what I can do is I can start to fill in the actual numbers that the question provided me. So my mass was 100. I had a gravity of 9.8 meters per second per second. Um, the k value that I got given was a tenth. So therefore it's going to be uh, v squared over 10. There is my force and of course it varies according to the velocity that I'm traveling at. Okay, now remember what I was saying before that you've got this kind of uh, downward force from gravity and then you have this upward force from um, the resistive uh, force that you experience from your medium, right? Now what I want is for these two exactly to balance out because then you're not accelerating back down to the ground anymore. Uh, you're going to just be, you know, traveling at whatever speed you're going and you're going to be at a constant velocity or at least you're getting closer and closer to that, right? So in other words, what I want for these to do is to exactly cancel with each other. How would I say that? The force should be approaching zero, right? Because these two, when you add them together, should be sort of balancing and canceling each other out. So I'm going to write that down, right? Terminal velocity, whoopsie daisy, terminal velocity occurs as the force approaches zero. Okay, so I've got my force equation just up here, right there. So I'm going to write that out and see if I can solve for V. That will give me my terminal velocity. So I've got, uh, I guess that's 980, oopsie daisy, on the left hand side, minus V squared on 10. That's equal to zero. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, I will uh, add V squared on 10 to both sides and pop this on the uh, left hand side. So that gives me this. V squared multiplying through by 10 gives me 9,800. And V is going to be the square root of 9,800, which I've already chucked into my calculator. And it's something like 98.99, etc. Uh, a lot of things which are going to round up. So in other words, I've got a velocity, um, a terminal velocity, I should say, of about 99 meters per second. So before we go any further, let's just remember how we did that. We set up our equation here, our force equation, and then we just said, well, your terminal velocity, once you reach that, you're not going to be speeding up or slowing down. So that force should be getting closer and closer to zero. So I've just solved for V when the force equation uh, gives me zero on one side. And then this is just algebra from here. Probably worth noting um, that in this frame of reference, <clears throat> it's just a downward journey. So that's why I'm only considering the positive value for V when I take the square root of both sides. 